Aloha everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about tropical versus sidereal or western versus Vedic astrology. And when people ask like which one is more accurate, that's a very like both, okay? They're both equally as accurate because they're mapping out different parts of the same cycle. And the cycle being how consciousness spirals down through the dimensions and manifests in the physical. So if you're looking at the densest level of it, it's Western astrology. It's about the matrix, it's about the ego, it's about the body, because it's based on the Gregorian calendar too. Like the spring equinox every year is on a specific date according to Western astrology. Whereas in Vedic astrology, it's following the actual constellations that are moving through space. Vedic, which is based on the constellation Aries. So the main difference between the two is that the whole zodiac is shifted 23 degrees. And where that's coming from is the fact that in, what, in Vedic astrology, it accounts for the 23 degree tilt that the pole of the Earth, of the Earth's axis, of, is on a 23 degree tilt. So that's because of the precession of the equinoxes and the poles are constantly shifting over time. But because, um, because of that, it's like the Earth's um, location in relation to the constellations in the sky is going to be changing, right? So that's where the six degrees difference of all the planets in, um, in Vedic astrology being shifted is also from. Western astrology is a lot more based on the actual ego, like the sun and it's more about your physical um, default blueprint, kind of, which is why a lot more people relate to it. While um, Vedic astrology is a lot more about your soul's signature. So it's a lot more far out and it's a lot more, it requires a lot more evolution for you to be fully tuned into your Vedic blueprint. Another difference is that Western astrology has, has the planets Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto which are like the non-physical like soul evolution looking into the future planets and that's kind of like what's bridging um those are like the furthest out planets too so it's like longer cycles of our life and that's kind of like what's bridging the physical to your vedic your vedic astrology i would say start with western because it's so much more simplified and a lot more people can relate to it i almost everybody that I talk to about astrology can relate to their Western, but only a few people can relate to their um, Vedic or, si or sidereal. That's because the Western is about the basic ego. It's like the physical, um, it's like your default, like lower nature self almost. And it's not that it's a good or a bad thing, but it's just more relatable to people. As consciousness travels through the dimensions and manifests in the physical, it's not straight down, it's moving through a spiral. Both of them are equally as correct, they just map out different parts of the same cycle. When your soul is moving down the spiral into the physical form, um, it's like a spectrum. So as you evolve more along your spiritual path, you should start to resonate more with Vedic. So I've been looking into mine more and before I remember I looked at it a few years ago and I was like, what is this? That's not me. I identify I identify with being a Scorpio so much. But then I look at my Vedic now and I'm looking at the whole spectrum when I put the two because you know, even Western astrology is not saying you're one sign. It's saying that you're different expressions of certain energies of these planets. I've been learning it well over four years now and it, astrology is what helped me find my life purpose and I think is a really useful tool that everybody should know their own, um, their own blueprint. I will look into, I will look at the two side by side too because you want to see like that's you right there. It's like your physical and your spiritual and the whole spectrum in between is like where you fluctuate between as you go as you move along this path. But ultimately you want to I think once you um understand your Vedic astrology, you can it's kind of like if you were meditating all the time and you were in this Christ consciousness state of mind all the time. That's kind of like what your Vedic is. It's a lot less based on the sun, which is western, which is like the ego. And it's more based on the moon, which is constantly shifting, as well as your rising sign. So if you if you look at Vedic astrology, it's a lot more complex because it has 27 nashatras, which are based on lunar constellations. and it kind of maps out um, the, your soul signature a lot more precisely. It's a lot more about your higher ascended self. Um, in my other video, I know I made it sound like astrology is like the end all and be all. It's definitely not, but 
I would say that as above, so below, as within, so without. We are made of the same materials as these celestial bodies and we're celestial bodies. So it's good to look, if you are looking for something outside yourself, but it's also within yourself, then the stars are probably the best guide out there because they've been around as long as our, as long as our material, way before, like, it's just the same spiritual energy as well as the physical energy that has been around since ancient times. Overall, it teaches you how to be sovereign because when you're working in harmony with certain things, you realize there are no accidents. I hope this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. Yeah, um, thanks for tuning in today.